dear viewers, welcome to the session which gives you an introduction to festivals and fairs. This session discusses about the importance of festivals and fairs celebrated in a region from the point of view of tourism. The objectives of the session are to understand the concept and background of festivals, to know about the different types of festivals, to learn about the meaning of fairs and their importance to the society, through a case study of the Kala Ghoda festival, comprehend the contributions of a festival towards drawing tourists and providing more economic opportunities to the region, and to discover the importance of fairs towards destination development through the case study of the Surajkund Craft Mela. Tourism as an industry is an all-encompassing activity that benefits a large number of groups, including those directly involved and also those who happen to have overlapping traits in the area. For instance, when one travels to a destination, the chain of events that follows affects a number of people on multiple layers. The mode of transport, the accommodation provider, the food suppliers and the local vendors of basic necessities are just to name a few. When conducted in a systematic manner, tourism can be extremely beneficial to elevate the local communities besides giving pleasure to those travelling. The scope of tourism becomes broader when events and happenings coincide with the dates of travelling or are the major reasons motivating people to travel. In India, the importance of fairs and festivals is largely responsible for people to travel. This happens on two levels. One, when festivals provide an extra holiday for people to plan a vacation and two, fairs of repetition attract them to visit the destination. Let us now understand the concept of festivals and fairs. To begin with, let us take a brief introduction about festivals. A festival is an event ordinarily celebrated by a community and centering on some characteristic aspect of that community and its religion or cultures. It is often marked as a local or national holiday. Next to religion and folklore, a significant origin is agriculture. Food is such a vital resource that many festivals are associated with harvest time. Religious commemorations and thanksgiving for good harvests are blended in events that take place in autumn, such as the Halloween in the Northern Hemisphere and Eastern in the Southern. Festivals often serve to fulfill specific communal purposes, especially in regard to commemoration or thanking to the gods and goddesses. Celebrations offer a sense of belonging for religious, social or geographical groups, contributing to group cohesiveness. They may also provide entertainment, which was particularly important to local communities before the advent of mass-produced entertainment. Festivals that focus on cultural or ethnic topics also seek to inform community members of their traditions. The involvement of elders sharing stories and experience provide a means for unity among families. In ancient Greece and Rome, festivals such as the Saturnalia were closely associated with social organization and political processes as well as religion. In modern times, festivals may be attended by strangers such as tourists. The Philippines is one example of a modern society with many festivals as each day of the year has at least one specific celebration. There are more than 42,000 known major and minor festivals in the country, most of which are specific to the village level. Many festivals have religious origins and entwine cultural and religious significance in traditional activities. The most important religious festivals such as Christmas, Diwali, Eid al-Fitr and Eid al-Adha serve to mark out the years. Others, such as harvest festivals, celebrate seasonal change. Events of historical significance, such as important military victories or other nation-building events, also provide the impetus for a festival. In many countries, royal holidays commemorate dynastic events, just as agricultural holidays are about harvests. Festivals are also commemorated annually. There are numerous types of festivals in the world and most countries celebrate important events or traditions with traditional cultural events and activities. Let us now look at the different types of festivals. 
religious festivals. Among many religions, a feast is a set of celebrations in order of gods and go goddesses. A feast and a festival are historically interchangeable. Most religions have festivals that occur annually and some such as Easter and Eid ul Adha are movable feasts that is those that are determined either by lunar or agricultural cycles or the calendar in use at that time. The annual commemoration of the festival helps in maintaining the buoyancy of the conserved natural site assisting in biodiversity conservation. Buddhist religious festivals such as Isala Pirahara are held in Sri Lanka and Thailand. Hindu festivals such as Holi are very ancient. The Sikh community celebrates the Vaishakhi festival marking the new year and the birth of the Khalsa. The Arts Festivals Among the many offsprings of general arts festival are also more specific types of festivals including ones that showcase intellectual or creative achievements such as science festivals, literary festivals and music festivals. Subcategories include comedy festivals, rock festivals, jazz festivals, poetry festivals, theatre festivals and storytelling festivals and re-enhancement festivals such as Renaissance fairs. Film festivals involve the screening of several different films and are usually held annually. Some of the most significant film festivals include the Berlin International Film Festival and the Venice Film Festival. The third kind of festivals are the food and drink festivals. A food festival is an event celebrating food or drink. These often highlight the output of products from a certain region. Some food festivals are focused on a particular item of food such as the National Peanut Festival in the United States or the Galloway International Oyster Festival in Ireland. There are also specific beverage festivals such as the famous Oktoberfest in Germany for beer. In the Philippines, there are at least 200 festivals dedicated to food and drinks. Seasonal and Harvest Festivals Seasonal festivals are determined by the solar and the lunar calendars and by the cycle of the seasons, especially because of its effect on food supply, as a result of which there is a wide range of ancient and modern harvest festivals. Ancient Egyptians relied upon the seasonal inundations caused by the Nile River, a form of irrigation which provided fertile land for crops. Certain festivals are of course observed within the serenity of the home and they should remain so. But several of our festivals lend themselves very well to being shared with visitors and travellers to our country. The most obvious of these are the Dashara and Diwali. The burning of Ravana egafis in public areas in North India, the Puja of Bengal, the fair at Kulu for Dashara and the fireworks of Diwali can all be made more accessible to the visitor. In each case, the idea of being in a large crowd should be alarming for those who are not used to it. But a public display of firecracker at Diwali, arrangements for festival meals at hotels and other public places could all help to make some portions of our major festivals a shared event. Certain traditional festivals and the fairs associated with them have already become a part of the traveller's itinerary, such as the Dashara celebrations at Mysore in Karnataka or Kulu in Himachal Pradesh. Other culture-based festivals have been created and nurtured most effectively, such as the annual festival of dance at Khajuraho and the festival at Mahabalipuram. These are an effective means of focusing attention on a particular area. It is the form of highlighting an existing event that draws tourists to the location, as sending out information and creating public awareness of the destinations through media coverage also creates awareness. There is no end to the number of such events which are possible. Tansen's seat at Fatehpur Sikri, the great rock stone ruins at Hampi, Golconda Fort at Hyderabad, Tipu Sultan's Fort, innumerable forts and palaces in Rajasthan and Madhya Pradesh, Orcha, Bundi provide infinite potentials. All it requires is the enthusiasm of all those concerned, the desire to do it authentically and carefully, and some degree of professional skill. A key resource in making such festivals a success is the media, with immense possibilities provided by social media like Instagrams and Facebook. Brochures and books 
are a necessary part of the travel industry. But these only come into use when a traveler has already made the decision to travel to a particular destination or location or at least registered an interest in that location. However, there is a vast untapped reservoir of possible visitors who would enjoy visiting a particular place if only they were made aware of all that it has to offer. One way of reaching such individuals is through advertisements. The other, and this probably has far greater reach and credibility, is through articles in newspapers and magazines. There are travel writers and writers on food, on clothes, on crafts, on sports, on paintings, and a whole host of other subjects who can be encouraged. Here again, for the travel professional, this involves identifying the writers concerned, doing one's homework, and being adequately prepared to provide information and opportunities to these writers who are read by the public at large and whose integrity and competence are beyond question. Let us now move ahead and look at the meaning of fairs. Some scholars stated that the word fair may have originated from the Latin word fair or holy days. According to evidence of fairs from Bible, 2000 years ago, fairs were considered as a commercial place for merchants to buy and sell their products or goods. On the basis of detailed study, some scholars concluded that at that time, business activities and religious activities were held in conjunction with each other. So some scholars believe that the word fairs may have originated from the Latin word fair or holidays. In India, Fairs are mostly associated with cultural background of religious activities, festivals, agricultural events, local temple, etc. Fair is a place where a large number of people gathered at specified time for purpose of buying and selling of goods. In short, fair is a mixture of commerce, trade, festivals, religious feasts and holidays. Fairs became a significant form of economic activity between the uh, thousands and the 1200s. A typical fair was simply an outgrowth of a town's weekly open-air market. Once a year, often at the time of a local saint's feast celebration, the town expanded this market into a multi-day event. Such small fairs had little importance to anyone outside the town. A few fairs became major events that attracted buyers and sellers from throughout the region or nation sometimes even from foreign countries. For example, Flemish merchants brought their goods to English fairs at St. Ives and Winchester. The only truly international fair took place in a few towns in northeastern France. There, merchants from England, France and the Netherlands traded clothes for Italian merchants' goods from the Mediterranean and the Near East. Before the 1400s, these were the only fairs where different coins and currencies were exchanged. The number of fairs declined when the European economy fell into a slump in the 1300s. During the unsteady recovery of the 1400s and 1500s, new fairs arose and old ones declined in importance. For much of the 1400s, Geneva, Switzerland held four fairs throughout the year that attracted merchants and financiers from all over Europe. By the 1500s, however, the quarterly fairs in Lyon, France had become the biggest in Europe. They supported a booming trade in merchandise, especially silks and spices. They also played a major role in the international money markets. Financiers met at the fairs to arrange loans and set interest rates. Whereas festivals can be divided into traditional events and those which have been uh, recently created to highlight a particular destination or event, Fairs are generally part of an older way of life, of trading activities of the past or connected to a festival and part of the local cultural patterns. To make an existing fair something that can be promoted as a tourist event needs a great deal of thought and careful planning. The needs of the local populace for whom the fair is a business opportunity as well as an opportunity to meet and celebrate and the expectations of visitors who may come to the fair in search of a quaint travel experience ought to be balanced, while the influx of a large number of strangers may provide added trade opportunities and the potential for local entrepreneurs to earn money, the new visitors shouldn't inundate the traditional activities which form the basis of the fair. 
The dilemma is to be seen in many areas, such as crafts in terms of capacious new markets taking over product or an event and then abandoning it to move on to the next novelty and thereby distorting and then destroying it. It is a particularly valid in terms of social events such as local fairs. Individuals involved in the travel and tourism business must be aware of the pitfalls such as these and make their decisions only after they have fully examined the possible repercussions of what they are proposing to do. Assuming a local fair has the possibility of being developed as a tourism event, the effort should always be to retain the fair's own character and to involve the local people in enlarging and expanding it to meet the needs of outsiders. It is all too easy to get into a situation where the bona fide local visitor to the fair are edged out by more affluent outsiders with disastrous results. To succeed, a fair has to retain its own original and unique character. Certain facilities and infrastructure is necessary to cope with increased numbers. Example, basic facilities such as accommodation, arrangements for safe drinking water and food, security and transportation. But it is important to retain the regional and local flavor of the event, its rural character and the trading activities for which it is held. If the same urban shops and stalls, entertainment and cuisines are poured into a local fair, it loses its character and therefore its reasons for existence. It is no longer worth a tourist's effort to travel some distance to participate in the event. Integrity, authenticity and a respectful regard for local customs are once again the hallmarks of development in this field. Compromise on any one of these factors and one is in danger of destroying the whole delicate fabric of the activity. Let us look at the popular festivals and fairs of India. Our age-old traditions have gifted the country with various festivals and fairs. Many tourists come to India to witness the various celebration and revel in the enjoyments. Indians celebrate various moments like plowing, harvesting day, changing seasons and many more. These fairs and festivals are part of the intrinsic cultural fabric of our society as well as a continuation of our heritage. Let us now take the example of a very popular festival and an equally popular fair to understand how local festivals and fairs can be integrated into tourism activities. The first is the Kala Ghoda Arts Festival. It is a nine day long annual festival commencing always on the first Saturday of February and closing always on the second Sunday in February in the Kala Ghoda area of South Mumbai, India. From its inception in 1999, the festival has grown in stature and popularity, attracting visitors and participants from other parts of the country and the world. The festival is organized by the Kala Ghoda Association, which is a non-profit organization that states its objective as physically upgrading the Kala Ghoda sub-precinct and making it the art district of Mumbai. It is curated by uh, teams handling each of the 12 sections of the festival. The festival sections are visual art, dance, music, theatre, cinema, literature including children's literature as a subsection, workshops, heritage walks, urban design and architecture which was introduced in 2014, food, a dedicated section for children and a vibrant street section including stalls selling eco-friendly handmade arts and craft wares. Entry to all events is free to all, only restricted by the size of the venues and costs are met through corporate sponsorship. Venues include the auditorium at the National Gallery of Modern Art, the garden at the David Sasson Library, the lawns and auditorium at CSMVS, the museum, the cross medan, the Ornimen Circle Garden, the MC Ghia Hall, the cafeteria at West Side, the Tata store at the Army and Navy building, the Max Muller Bhavan a gallery and the entire street area of the Kaikashuru Dubash Marg and its parking lot popularly called as the Rampart Row. The success of the Kala Ghoda Arts Festival has arguably encouraged the setting up 
of several other arts and cultural festivals at that time of the year when the weather in Mumbai is cool and the sun sets early. These include the Mumbai festival and the Kitab festival. The festival has also featured noticeable music arts acts like the Indus Creed, Beni Dayal and Ustad Zakir Hussain. Let us now take a look at a very important fair that is held in India, the Suraj Kund Mela. It is the world's largest international crafts fair. The brainchild of Haryana tourism, this Mela was established to promote the pool of skilled artisans from the well-known as well as remote regions of the country and save our cultural heritage from extinction due to the cheaper machine-made imitations. Occupying a place of pride on the international tourist calendar, more than a million visitors throng the Mela during the fortnight, including thousands of foreign tourists. The Suraj Kund Mela is unique as it showcases the richness and diversity of the handicrafts, handlooms and cultural fabric of India and is the largest crafts fair in the world. It is organized in the backdrop of the lake during the spring seasons every year from the 1st to 15th February held on 40 acres of land in the precincts of the Suraj Kund which is attended by all states of India along with several dozen other nations and over 1.2 million visitors including 200,000 foreigners throng to Surajkund. Started in 1987, it is an earnest collaborative effort of the Surajkund Mela Authority and Haryana Tourism in association with Union Ministries of Tourism, Textile, Culture and External Affairs. This Mela provides a platform to various craft persons across the country to directly market their goods and sell it to the public by eliminating the middlemen. Each year, an Indian state is chosen to the theme state of the Mela and a participating country as the partner nation. The purpose of this is simple, to mark the focus of the fair on the crafts of a particular theme that will showcase the best of its art, culture, traditions and heritage during the entire duration of the Mela. Craft persons, artisans, cultural troops, musicians and master chefs from this state and nation present their talent and skills and enthrall the visitors at the premises. A large number of renowned national and international folk artists and cultural groups present day performances at both the Chopals, that is the open air theatres, located in the Mela premises. Also enthralling cultural evening programmes are held at the main Chopal during each of the Mela evening. The Mela is indeed a custodian of the heritage crafts involving use of traditional skills that are fading away due to cheap machine-made imitations and a special section is earthmarked for showcasing of these heritage crafts. The multi-cuisine food court provides ethnic cuisines from all over the world which are immensely popular with visitors. There are designed places for amusement, adventure, sports and joy rides to make it a must visit event for the young. In 2013, the fair was upgraded to an international level and in 2015, a record number of 20 countries participated in the Mela and Lebanon was the partner nation and Chhattisgarh the theme state. So, in order to help preserve the languishing arts and crafts of India, the Surajkin Mela offers its craftsmen and visitors alike a lifetime experience to indulge in the biggest market of cultural exchange. This exchange happens here in many forms. Let us now look at the different forms. Handcrafted goods that showcase the expert craftsmanship and creativity of the people belonging to different regions, states and countries are covered. Delicious delicacies of different places that are sure to make you a uh, on a, take you on a gastronomical journey, joyride is also there. Vibrant folk performances at the Chopals and the open air theatre, the Natyashala, inside uh, that display the place's cultural di distinctiveness. Skits or plays performed by the youth at various different venues of the Mela, mostly addressing the social issues affecting our society, using the Mela as a platform for bringing the to light owing to the enormous turnover of people here is also displayed. 
delicious de delicacies of different places are there uh, for the uh, visitors to enjoy. Vibrant folk performances at the Chopal and the open air theatre in Artishala also takes place. Skits and plays are performed by youth, mainly focusing on social issues uh, because there is an array of visitors and turnover of people here. The colours and crafty look of the Mela uh, displays the heritage of the theme region and this changes year to year. Musical evenings are also organised at the Natishala and uh, of course there are designated places for amusement, adventure, sports and joy rides at the venue. Now let us take a look at what exactly Suraj Kund uh, the place is all about. It is an ancient reservoir of the 10th century. It is a site popular for the Suraj Kund Mela uh, and uh, it is located 8 kilometers away from South Delhi in Faridabad. Its name comes from the ancient amphitheatre or sun pool that was constructed here in the 10th century AD by Raja Suraj Pal. Located in the Aravali mountain range, Suraj Kund drives its popularity from this famous crafts mela launched in 1981. Suraj Kund, also called the Peacock Lake because of its delightful beauty, is now a well-known tourist destination in the Har Haryana state. The nearest airport is the Indira Gandhi International Airport, New Delhi, which is 25 kilometers away. The nearest railway stations are the New Delhi Railway Station and the Nizamuddin Railway Station, 22 kilometers and 21 kilometers respectively by road. It is also approached by road and rail from Faridabad. Now, what are the activities that can be done at the Suraj Kund Mela? The fair is a great, great platform to take a peek into the heritage. Uh, you can uh, indulge in shopping activities since craftsmen and artisans at the Mela sell their goods at relatively fair prices in comparison to their home states. Experiencing different cuisines is another delight of the Suraj Kund Mela and the travellers get a chance to indulge in varied delicious delicacies of different states and regions. One can also experience cultural performances, folk performances of the theme states can be seen throughout the festival. There are cultural performances like folk dances, skits, street plays, musical evenings, kavi samelans and stunt shows which are taking place throughout the day. One can also enjoy the helicopter ride. Uh, the Suraj Kund authorities are letting visitors indulge in this rare opportunity so that one can view the entire uh, section through an aerial view. Amusement zone which is a famous a pool for the kids and youngsters where they can indulge uh, at um, various games like the ferris wheel, bungee jumping to video games. Let us now sum up the session. Festivals and fairs play a pivotal role in nation building, bringing people from every religion and economic and social background together. Both contribute immensely to feelings of social cohesion. Many such celebrations focus on cultural or ethnic topics and seek to inform community members of their traditions. They involve community elders sharing stories and experiences, setting templates for maintaining unity among families. Festivals and fairs also stimulate economic activities since they provide employment opportunities to people. They frequently act as primary agents of cultural conservation and stages for the construction and consolidation of national identity formation. In addition, fairs and festivals are a series of carefully orchestrated practical glimpses into the artists' traditional and cultural lives. Finally, the massive media focus on these events and on crowds consisting of local and tourists, diplomats and foreign tourists, and governments and non-government personages all entailed recognition of the richness of the region's traditional heritage and cultural achievements, thus giving rise to a great deal of cultural creativity, lending legitimacy to a magnified sense of national identity and unity, at the same time contributes in creating international recognition and popularity. Thank you for your patient listening.